welcome back to Digging Around Outdoors. And thank you for joining us on a gusty day here on the banks of the lovely Fox River. Thank you for all of those who have subscribed. It's good to see you again. For all of you that watch the channel and like the content, please hit the subscribe button and share with your friends. I hope you enjoy the show today. After my video comparing the different sizes of Lodge Dutch ovens, in which I extolled the virtues of the 8-inch Dutch oven for cooking cornbread, it was pointed out to me that I probably ought to make a video on cooking cornbread in the 8-inch Lodge Dutch oven. So today we're going to do just that. We're going to cook Jiffy cornbread with a twist in the 8-inch Dutch oven and show you how easy it is to use the Dutch oven and how well it bakes. Today, since we are in a county forest preserve, we've brought the Dutch oven table. As I mentioned in a previous video, we don't normally take this camping with us, but since we adhere religiously to the tread lightly and leave no trace philosophy of camping, we did want to bring it so that we weren't cooking on the ground in a county forest preserve. So when you're cooking in a Dutch oven, there are some things that you must have and other things that are nice to have. So what do I consider a must have? Well, first, the Dutch oven. Can't cook in a Dutch oven without the Dutch oven. Second is some type of lid lifter. This happens to be the Lodge lid lifter. There are many other ones out there. Some are longer, some have a grip. Uh, you just have to decide which is best for you. I like this one, it's easy to pack. You need tongs of some sort because you're moving hot coals back and forth on and onto the oven and out of the fire. You need some sort of fat for the Dutch oven. I prefer Crisco generally. You can use Pam or any other cooking spray or olive oil if you'd like. When I'm baking, I prefer to use Crisco. And then once you get past the must-haves, there are some things that are nice to have. If you're using charcoal, one very nice thing to have is a charcoal starter. This is a small Weber charcoal starter. They make two sizes. I like the smaller one for Dutch oven cooking because you're not using that many coals. Uh, second thing is a way to start the fire. We're using wax and wood fire starters today. It's nice to have some fireproof gloves. These happen to be Kevlar gloves from Fireside Outdoors. You can use welding gloves just as easily. And something else that's nice, when you buy a Lodge Dutch oven, you actually get, a, a I should say, a Lodge Camping Dutch oven. You get a copy of the Camp Dutch Oven Cooking 101 book from Lodge. And it talks about the history of the Dutch ovens. It talks about how to stack the coals, it, it gives you some recipes and that sort of thing. But one of the things I really like is it also gives you a chart that lists the various sizes of ovens and the number of coals that you need to reach specific temperatures. So it's a handy little guide to have. I don't know if the other Dutch oven companies provide a book like this, but this is a really helpful starter's guide. So today what we're gonna cook is we're gonna cook a box of Jiffy cornbread, but we're going to make green chili cornbread. So we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Let's get cooking. Our charcoal is hot. I'm just finishing up the greasing of the pan. Uh, as you can see, I've done the lid as well as the inside of the Dutch oven where we're cooking. This is uh, done to help season the Dutch oven as well as to help the food release. So you always want to have a little coat of oil on it. You don't want it really thick. You don't want to glob it on there because you don't want it to, to get sticky. So just a nice thin coat. We're now going to mix up the cornbread. Uh, we're using, again, the Jiffy cornbread in the box if you've never used it. It's quite good. So you just mix it up. I'm just getting the lumps out of it before I mix everything else in. So the normal mix for Jiffy is the mix, one egg,
one third of a cup of milk. Measure twice, cut once. And today we are going to add a can of green chili peppers. I don't know if you've seen this type of can opener. It's a rather old design, but it works very well for camping. Very light, compact, works very well. This is a four and a half ounce can. Normally we purchase the four ounce cans. Then you mix the mix up, make sure it's mixed well. It is a little bit lumpy, even when it's mixed well. And then Jiffy recommends to let it sit for three to four minutes before you pour it in the pan and start the cooking. That just helps it rise a little bit better. Time is up. We've put the cornbread in the pan. I did want to point out that since it is a gusty day, I have put the windbreak on the Dutch oven stove. Normally when I'm camping, I would put a cooler in front of it or something like that to block the wind if we're getting some gusts. So remember earlier we said 18 coals is 400 degrees in an eight inch Dutch oven. And the rule of thumb is one third on the bottom, two thirds on top. So I've got six coals on the bottom. I'm gonna set the stove on it. So that the coals are roughly around the pan. Put the lid on. And then just arrange the rest of the coals around the top. Now, clearly, Dutch oven cooking is as much an art as it is a science. To get exactly 375 degrees or 400 degrees in a Dutch oven is aspirational. Totally depends on the wind, the temperature, the charcoal you're using. Some briquettes are bigger than others. If you're losing lump hardwood, well, then that's a totally different story. If you're using coals out of your fire, that's a totally different story as well. But this is a good guideline and it does help to get the right general temperature for your cooking. If I've ever had any trouble cooking in a Dutch oven, it's burning something on the bottom when I'm baking. I think the rule of thumb is that if you are not sure how many coals to use, that you go lighter on the bottom when you're baking instead of loading it up so you make sure you don't get it too hot. The other thing is, since coals are uh, an inexact heat source, you do need to rotate the Dutch oven while you're cooking. We'll do that during this cook time. This is supposed to go 15 or 20 minutes. We'll probably rotate it two to three times. We are six minutes in, so I thought I would show you turning the Dutch oven with the lid lifter. So essentially you turn the pot one direction, a quarter turn. So I've turned that clockwise. And then when you turn the lid, you go the other direction. So we're gonna turn the lid counterclockwise. Turn. And that helps balance out the heat around the pan from the coals. Okay, we're another six minutes in. I thought I would just show you how easy it is if you do have heat gloves or welding gloves. You can just rotate it by picking it up and spinning the outside. Now, clearly you would never want to do that without welding gloves. This does get quite hot. It seems our dinner guests have arrived and just on time. Our cornbread is done. Really nice browning on top. We're gonna take it off the coals, cut into it and see how we did. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut into the cornbread.
Looks like shamrock cornbread because of the green peppers. Cornbread is ready to eat. Traditionally, I like to eat my cornbread with maple syrup. Today we're using maple syrup from B&E Trees in Wisconsin. What I found with the green chili cornbread is that if you use a really dark maple syrup, it sort of overpowers the chilies, but if you use a nice light maple syrup, like they're bright, it lets the chilies shine through. And there you have it. Green chili cornbread from a Dutch oven. I want to thank you again for watching. Thank you again to those who have subscribed. And if you like the content, please do subscribe. Please share it with your friends. And as always, again, I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks very much and take care.